This is Twit. Uh, publishers are working hard, well, now to put libraries out of existence. They, we talked last week. Yeah, we talked yeah. last week about Internet Archive, uh, which lost its case this week in uh, in a lower court ruling sure. for uh, what it calls uh, what is it cloud library distribution. It's, uh, it's it's controlled digital controlled lending. digital lending CDL. Yeah. There you go. Yep. CDL. Yeah. So well, just a bit, let me make sure I understand what was happening. So the uh, Internet Archive which is the Wayback Machine. It's archive.org. It's really the library of the internet and a really valuable resource for everybody. In fact, they, they actually bought and, uh, and housed themselves in a old library building in San Francisco uh, near Golden Gate Park. It's just beautiful. So they, a church actually, it's a church, but it's, it, a, it's got columns. Church. It looks yeah. like, I don't know. I imagine the it's library amazing. of Alexandria must have looked yeah. like beautiful. Uh, beautiful yeah, I guess it's a church. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, but the, uh, they were, uh, taking uh, books, often donated by libraries, old bo used books that the library was going to replace, and uh, uh, digitizing them, mm -hmm. making e-books out of the paper books, and then mm -hmm. lending them out, and, and lending them out just as a library does, where they it's like they have one copy, and you can't two people can't check out the same copy. So yeah. uh, And that's how libraries do it as well. But the publishers have sued. Was it now? Are they suing over that, or was it the fact that they relaxed restrictions in COVID? Would no, you? that's what they're suing over. It's not about the relaxed restrictions. I have to be really careful here because I work with Electronic Frontier Foundation, and we are counsel for the archive. I want to be really clear that I, anything I say about this case is me speaking personally and not speaking on behalf of EFF. I'm a contractor to them, not an employee, but I'm still part of the organization. So. I mean, it's a very nuanced question about copyright law, but for me, there's this like very bottom line idea, which is that libraries are really old. Libraries are not just older than copyright or publishing, they're older than books and paper, right? Libraries have been around since we had scrolls of papyrus and they're, they're older than commerce as we understand it. And the idea that we have made a technological change, not more profound than the technological changes we made when we went from papyrus to paper or scrolls to codexes or you know from books copied by scribes to books that were printed that the idea that somehow digital is so profoundly different that we just say okay well you can you can lend out books that are copied by monks but you can't lend out books that are represented on hard drives because we are just in a new world to me that is um it's not just ghastly in terms of how it makes me feel about a future for my family as a writer and an artist, but also as someone who believes in public goods and access to human knowledge. It, it, I may, I fear for it as someone who cares about books, because, you know, one of the things about books is that they do have this kind of penumbra of antiquity and virtue where like, if you're making a dumb student film and you want to show society's collapse, you just put a pile of books together and you set fire to them. And people are like, oh yeah, it's like eating dogs or something. That's like wrong. We know everything has gone wrong. And if you just convince people that books are just like another widget, that they're like a happy meal toy, uh, people might in fact take you at your word and like stop buying books just so they can be surrounded by them and stop giving people books as a way of showing them how special they, they are to them and stop thinking about books in this kind of wonderful way that that is such a source of revenue to writers and publishers. You know, if I, if I have a healthy retirement, it'll be as much because of that as because of anything I ever wrote. And, and I really worry that you have this idea that we should just treat publishing like another business, like, like we could treat, you know, your puppy as just another source of protein. And, and, you know, if we do that, I think the worst thing that could possibly happen is that we'd succeed. Leah Holland of fight for the future said in a chilling ruling, a lower court judge in New York has completely disregarded the traditional rights of libraries to own and preserve books in favor of maximizing the profits of big media conglomerates and tech dirt uh, I think I probably was Mike Masnick wrote that this is really just a straw man. The, the publishers have wanted to get rid of libraries all along. And this case is just one step forward in their, in their, uh, yeah. goal. Uh, of course the internet library today. 
Yeah. You couldn't you couldn't start a library today. No way. Yeah. Right. Like, yeah. you know, if libraries didn't exist and you tried to found one, they'd be like, we can't do that. Shut up, commie. You, you can't know? do that. Give away. <laughs> books. What commie came up with this idea? Lend Thomas books. Jefferson. <laughs> ben Benjamin Franklin? Franklin. What the yeah. hell was wrong with him? Uh, yeah. They will appeal. Internet Archive, uh, Brewster Kale, will appeal, of course. And uh, I imagine this is going to the Supreme Court. Unfortunately, I don't have high hopes of the Supreme Court understanding uh, the risks here. But maybe they would. Maybe they would. Yeah. I mean, the dirty secret about Ruth Bader Ginsburg is as good as she was on other issues. She wasn't good on copyright. Yeah. Uh, you know, copyright's a weird issue that people split in a million ways on. Uh, and, you know, I think that, like, as much as there are elements of copyright that I depend on for my living, there's parts of it that are structured so badly that they actually get in the way, right? Like this, like the fact that we have a copyright law that says that Amazon can put DRM in my books and then I can't authorize you to remove it is a problem with copyright. Right. And, you know, it's like, it's, you know, when people say, don't you like copyright? You have to be really specific. Like what part of copyright are you asking me about? Well, the parts that get me paid are great. You've always been, <laughs> and it's really great because you are an author. You make your living off of writing. You've always been very clear that you don't need that to make a good living off of writing, and that you're happy to offer your books through Creative Commons and even free downloads yeah. on your website. I've and, done that too, and but also like if you if you told me that my copyright would endure for my life in fifty years instead of my life in ninety years, I wouldn't write fewer books. Right. And, you know, I was just, in fact, negotiating a contract with someone to do some um, work with my work. And uh, and we had this question about whether certain uses would be reserved to them if I wanted to repurpose it in the future. And I said, like, this is fine, except that what we're ultimately talking about is that if I give my copyrights over to a library on my death, your grandchildren could sue that library over how it chooses to preserve it, right? That is like, and that's a, a giant X factor that plays up in, in many ways, right? We, we had Stephen Joyce, the grandson of James Joyce, refusing to allow scholars to research Joyce's work because uh, he didn't like how they characterized Joyce's work and Joyce scholarship languished for years. You had uh, Warner Music conjuring up uh, fanciful stories out of the distant past to say that they own the, the uh, lyrics to Happy Birthday and and shaking down restaurants and movies and all kinds of places if they tried to sing Happy Birthday in public. That's why when you go to like TGI Fridays, they had these weird birthday songs that like <laughs> Happy Birthday, Happy Birthday, Happy Birthday. It was like they didn't want to pay Dane Geld to, to Warners, right? So, you know, like there are lots of elements of this. You know, a little goes a long way and we need to attend to the actual like distributional outcomes right when you when you tweak copyright in this way who does it make richer and who does it make poorer it, it, and and i think a copyright that benefits artists is is something i can get behind but one that uh moves most of that benefit to say intermediaries like libraries or like uh, publishers or distributors or digital platforms i i don't think that's that's serving any kind of artistic purpose i think that's just rent seeking uh we've spoken a lot about Corey's. uh fantastic blog post on insurtification, which is what I call it. Uh, <laughs> it's a, this is, this ties into that. I also want to send people to the website battle for This is uh, a site where you could sign a petition and find out more. And you really should uh, find out more because we want to, I mean, look, we want to save not just the internet archive, which by the way, all by itself is well worth saving, but every library in America. So I, mean, I, I can't speak for the other, other participants, but I've got to say, I would not be in the career I'm in if it wasn't from our public library. Yeah. You know, I spent entire summers in there. I went when I took my wife back to the UK, we went to to my old library just to smell the books and, you know, uh, in, in, enjoy the feeling. They're still running the same literacy courses that I took, which started mm -hmm. me on the road to being a journalist. They're an incredibly important resource. Yeah. It's the last institution that in, in every town where you're valued because you're a person and not because you got something in your wallet. Love it's the it. last place. Yeah. Well, you do have something in your wallet, your library card, but that's uh, yeah. that's worth <laughs> but getting. If you don't have one, they'll give you one. They'll give you one. They so give you it to you. don't even have to have one. Yeah, they'll give it to you. Right. <laughs> they'll put it in your wallet for you. Corey's uh, book is right now on Kickstarter. Uh, it's This would be a very good time. To sign up for Red Team Blues, another audio book that Amazon comes out sell. from Macmillan in, in on the twenty fifth. So nice. you, it will be will be uh, I'll be touring the U S, the U K, Canada, and Germany. And and I can see uh, Brad Pitt as Marty Hench, forensic uh, 
CPA. Yeah. It's the story <laughs> of a man and his coin, Leo. Easily. A man and his coin. A man and his coin. I this they're gonna option this one, especially this is the new James Bond. This is gonna be Albert Broccoli's gonna be on the phone any day now. I can tell you right now. But the well, other kind thank of bond, you. the financial bond. I would settle for a lesser zucchini. I don't need the broccolis. <laughs> this episode of Tech Break is brought to you by ACI Learning. Audit Pro from ACI Learning modernizes the way your team learns. Earn NASBA approved CPE credits through engaging training curriculum led by highly respected industry experts. With more than a 90% completion rate, Audit Pro courses are proven to be the most effective and efficient way to earn your CPE credits. Learn more at go.acilearning.com slash twit.